Welcome to your personal deep dive. This time we're in the world of uh, MGMs from. You guys sent in some awesome stuff, analyses, fan theories, even dialogue. You guys are hooked. And trust me, I get it. Yeah. This town gets under your skin, doesn't it? But we're not here to just rehash the plot. We're going deeper, like always. You've got a theory or question, really, that we're diving into. What if all the supernatural horror in From is rooted in trauma? Mm -hmm. So joining me to explore this is expert speaker who, uh, well, let's just say you know your way around the spooky woods of Fromville, even if it's just metaphorically. Let's just say I'm glad I'm not stuck in that town when the sun sets. Right. Me too. Yeah. So you've seen all the listener research we got. What's your initial reaction to this whole trauma theory? Honestly. It's fascinating. Yeah. Like so many fans see this connection to Victor's past. Almost like there's this feeling that Frumville itself is, you know, like a pressure cooker and Victor's trauma is just turning up the heat. Yeah, yeah. Like the town's reacting to him, feeding off it almost. Our listeners specifically mentioned that music box creepy and that shilling nursery rhyme. Could those be echoes of Victor's trauma, like manifesting in Frumville? Totally. I mean, those elements, they're so deeply woven into like the supernatural fabric of that town, you know? Mm. What if Fromville's like a microphone? Mm -hmm. Picking up on those echoes of past traumas, Victor's pain, his fears, they could be like amplifying it all. So instead of ghosts, we're talking traumatic echoes. That's, wow, actually that's creepier in a way. Knowing those whispers could be real. Right, and, and it makes you question, like what's real in Fromville anyway? Because I mean, we know from Tabitha's escape that this place is not just in Victor's head. Exactly. Our listener was floored by that scene in season three, as were we. It confirmed <laughs> it. Fromville is terrifyingly real. Yeah, and that's what makes this theory so interesting. Right. How do we square Victor's trauma being so central to the town with the fact that this place exists without him? Right, it's uh. like he's the latest player in a game that's been going on for like centuries, maybe even longer. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Our listener mentioned those older settlements, the ones way before Victor. So Frumville has a history, right? Cycles of horror playing out long before he got there. So it's layers of trauma, right? Like sediment building up over time. It's not just Victor. It's everyone who's ever been stuck in that town. Exactly. Yeah. It's like Frumville is haunted by this like collective suffering, you know? <laughs> but then that brings up another question. If this town exists on its own, with its own dark history, why is Victor so deeply connected to it? Like he's the key or something, right, to unlocking some bigger mystery. What makes Victor different from, say, Boyd? Or even Sarah, they've both got their own stuff going on. Right, right, that's the million dollar question. And we don't have a definitive answer from the show yet, but we can, you know, look at some possibilities. One that I keep coming back to is this idea of resonance. What if Frumville is like um, a tuning fork? And each person who gets trapped there, they add their own like frequency of pain and fear. So it's less about Victor causing the horror and more about him amplifying what's already there. Like he's tuned into Fromville's darkness. Exactly. And maybe, just maybe, his trauma resonates with a specific part of Fromville's past. We know those settlements are old, right? Mm -hmm. What if they tell a story, specific trauma, that's like mirrored in Victor's? Maybe that unlocks something worse. Do you... That's creepy. Okay. Like, he's bringing back some old nightmare. But what about those phone calls, the creepy ones? How do those fit into this? Yeah, those are strange. They could be, like, extensions of that same frequency we were talking about, whispers of trauma, amplified by Fromville, leaking out. But there's another possibility. It's a little more uh, unsettling. Oh, I'm here for unsettling. Hit me. Okay. So, what if those calls are coming from someone else who's trapped? Someone who's been in Fromville even longer than Victor. Maybe they see a kindred spirit in him, another soul drowning in all that trauma. Oh, wow. That's that's kind of sad, actually. And it just adds another layer, doesn't it? Like, is this person trying to help Victor, warn him? Or is it something worse? Are they being, like, used by the town? Or is there something else entirely in control? Which leads to the biggest question of all. What if there is something behind all of this, some kind of, like you said before, unknown entity pulling the strings in Fromville. What could it be? Okay, yeah, now we're going full conspiracy theory here, but I am here for it. So if there's something behind this Fromville nightmare, like pulling the strings, yeah, what are we talking about here? Well, we can't know for sure, but going by what the show's given us so far, one possibility, and it's kind of creepy, from Fromville is like a hunting ground for some <laughs> something old, something out of myth, maybe. Oh, wow like primal fear kind of stuff. The monsters we tell stories about. Exactly. Something drawn to like concentrated fear, you know, yeah. despair. From Formville's like a beacon and everyone trapped there. They're the prey. And Victor, 
with how he is with the town's darkness, maybe he's not just prey. Maybe he's the main course. Right. It explained why he's always at the center of things. He's not just seeing the horror. He's drawing it in. Yeah. But there's another possibility. And it's even more uh, unsettling to me, honestly, mm -hmm. because it implies, like, control. Okay. You're killing me with suspense here. What's worse than being a monster's dinner? What if this entity? Right. Yeah. What if it's not evil, not in the way we think of it? Mm -hmm. What if it's just intelligence, like yeah. advanced alien intelligence studying us? Through trauma. Wait. So Fromville's not a hunting ground. It's a lab. And we're the lab. Say? Oh, wow. We're the lab rats. Yeah. It's a lot to take in. But imagine, right, being so far beyond us, it can make Frumville real just to see how we break down. Yeah. They might not even see us as people, just subjects in some big experiment. Man, that is bleak. But it would explain a lot. Like, why are the rules in Frumville so messed up, so hard to figure out? We're trying to understand something that's on a whole other level. Exactly. And the phone calls, those whispers, maybe that's just them watching, collecting data, or even like, poking at the experiment, seeing what happens. Oh, like that that time Boyd talked about the town testing them. But what if it's not the town? What if it's something way bigger, watching everything? So we started with, is this trauma? From all about trauma. And honestly, yeah. I don't think it's a simple yes or no. Trauma might be the engine, right? What? what powers the nightmare? Yeah. But the real horror, maybe it's that someone's watching us suffer and we don't even know why. So what started as a deep dive into one character's pain just became a full-blown existential crisis. And honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. That's from for you. It makes you think. It makes you question everything. Exactly. And listener, while you're thinking about all that, here's something else to chew on. What if the way out of Frommeville isn't about understanding the trauma? What if it's about understanding the thing that's controlling it? Just a thought. And until next time, keep asking the big questions. <laughs>